Okay. So, <clears throat> see how far through we get with this. This time. So we're going to respond to comments. In the wrong order. So, so Jala Jabonheim, best effort at saying that, says in an older video you spoke about your practices expanding your awareness and then just being present. Could you please elaborate on that? So there's, a, there seems to be a direction of attention, or a subject of attention, or an object of attention. More object, I would say. And that attention seems to be a limitation of what you describe as awareness. The awareness is undefinable, all-encompassing, doesn't have limits, doesn't have borders, doesn't have a definitive start and end point. So you could say it's infinite. In that there's a seeming direction of tension that seemingly comes from a subject of awareness, directed to an object of attention. That seems to be mostly constructed by thought. So a simple test you could do is to become aware of your left ear, then become aware of your right foot, then place the attention on it. Place the attention on your left kneecap. You see how the uh, experience changes. It wasn't as if those body parts weren't there. It wasn't as if before we decided to direct attention to it, it wasn't as if as if they if we weren't aware of them. You know, the awareness of them was was there. It just um, the the direction of attention that is most prominent in experience narrows awareness. Let's say just as a uh, vague way of describing it limits whatever this is to a defined object or a defined point of uh, attention so what I describe as expanding the attention or the awareness is like a dilation of that objective focus and you, you can do that by becoming aware of the subject and that would kind of be like self-inquiry <laughs> And shifting your awareness to the subject, you you never <clears throat> you never find it, but it seems to be here. And in looking for it, you generally it's assumed the borders, it's assumed the boundaries aren't found, and as they're not found, it expands. The subject expands out, and eventually the subject expands out to include all objects, and then the subject object. Duality is transcended, let's say, for a want of a better explanation. So the strange quality of thought objects, thought narratives, seems to be a hyper-focus, a habitual hyper-focus. Hyper-focus on something that's not even that definable, not even that obvious. Um, that seems to absorb energetically a lot of attention and as a result of that narrows what you would describe as awareness to a very narrow subject-object relationship, a relational position and that relational position is what I would refer to as a, a me or a self. Um, expanding awareness, you know, you 
can intuitively and naturally try and find awareness. Try and find yourself beyond thought and you probably find that the attention moves into the immediate environment. Once it moves past thought, once it moves away from thought, the only place it can really go or expand to is the sensory experience. And I think I described the the senses as kind of the gateways or the present direct experience of that as the gateway to what we talk about as non-duality or non-dual or unity or oneness or whatever you'd like to um, way you'd like to describe it. Another good way to do it is I did this one a lot. You could start with the sound, so listen to the sounds. And then watch for the suggestion of an interpretation of what that sound is and where it is in relation to the center position of, of me hearing it. And then see if any of that structure is actually present in the direct, immediate experience of sound. So car behind me. Van in front of me. Engine sound. How far away it is. I'm inside the car, so the sounds are muffled a bit, so on and so on. None of that is present without thought. The thought augments a restriction onto the single experience of sound. The undefinable, infinite, timeless experience of the single sound. And categorises it up into objects of attention. If you can see that happening, it pretty much breaks the spell. If you can really see it happening, um, it, it does something to the what I call an aug augmentation, the thought augmentation. It allows that not to be the limit of experience. It allows you to see past that to what is actually the experience, what is actually there or here which isn't here or there, and what that is I can't describe. The, the true sound, the true appearance, the visual appearance, the true sensation. You can do it with the body too, so move your attention into the sense, the perception of the body, and then watch for the, the container that is suggested through thought, the shape, the form, the position, what it looks like. There might be a vague image. It might be something, so an image of a body. I move my hand, there'll be like an image of the hand moving that's like framed over the actual sensations. Because in the sensations, that the, the definition isn't there in the same way. In fact, the definition is barely there at all. <laughs> Um, it's kind of like a the, the function of proprioception partially as a kind of image based projection from the mind that's augmented on top of the sensations and that's a very inherent one um, but you can see through it pretty easily um, by just focusing purely on the sensations without an augmentation without an interpretation. You can connect with the, the sensation as it is, and the sensation as it is is also infinite, it's also without boundary, shape, size or distance. Um, really if you go deeply into it, it's without locality or location. Uh, and then you can compare the, the touch, the sense of the body to the sound, compare the sound to the, the image appearance and see if you can find a division between any of it. 
eventually it gets to a point where there's no way you can even talk about it but it's obvious and it's the most beautiful thing that you could experience the most incredible fascinating thing that you could experience is just what's already here without the the suggestions without the assumptions laid over the top that categorize it and make it knowable understandable or controllable or have as a reference as it relates to a me so that's kind of what i was meaning next one brad mod says oneness Non-duality is a clumsy way of saying oneness. Yeah, I like oneness. Um, the idea behind non-duality is that oneness would be something being one. This is how I understand it would be relative to a position that's not one. Uh, counting a one would be relative to uh, something else separate from the one. So the idea behind non-duality, as clumsy as it sounds, and it does is to um, address in language vaguely the uh, that uh, relative uh, existence of one relative to something that's not one. I mean, you could say the same thing about non-duality, but it's just personal preference. People, some people um, prefer a certain language. I would, I would tend to use oneness. Um, I like that as well. So, Jonathan Wood Vincent says, You might find John Cage's music interesting. After 1959, he was influenced by Zen. It was almost all based on chance operations. It's impossible to listen to in a way that makes sense. Sound is just sound. Music of changes, for instance. There are many other similar composers as well. I'm going to definitely check that out, I really like the, the idea behind that. Um, I think I mentioned in a previous video that, at least personally, why I was attracted to, to music, progressive music specifically, is that, and why I got very excited about new albums, is that because the, I didn't know what was coming next, it was spontaneous, it was very, that newness to it, that immediate spontaneousness to it, if that's even a word, was uh, fascinating and it, it brought the attention directly into the, the sound um, and that that awe, that fascination that I just talked about was was glimpsed every time I listened to a new like, progressive album that I liked, uh, or, or for a band that I liked. Um, you, could, you could guess you could say that was like a non-dual experience. <laughs> but just not a conscious one but thank you for the suggestion I'll check that out so Jala Jabohem sorry I'm butchering that probably it says <laughs> I apologise it says maybe have a special email address dedicated to people's questions instead of having them posted on their videos yeah I'll post my email address people feel free to email me and talk to me or whatever I'm open to talking to anyone um, if I've got the time um, I quite like having the comments out in the open. I quite, uh, I think you might be suggesting that maybe some people might not be comfortable having, because you have to kind of be quite open, authentic, and vulnerable to to ask questions and you know to talk about you know, these sort of things. Um, so everyone might not feel comfortable doing it on in the comments. So that's a good suggestion for sure. Fire me an email. I'll stick it in the uh, channel description, but I quite like having the comments out in the open because I, I feel like I'm not specifically talking to one person, even the one person asked a question and I might, be, I might feel like it's specific to them, but anything I post, anything that's discussed here is, is just, it's just the one, uh, the journey, the one expression, the one um, understanding, the one knowledge if there is any knowledge there and I, I quite like having that out in the open I quite like not the idea of not moderating the, the comments or same with my videos uh, going back, deleting videos editing videos, I want to have it all kind of authentic, as authentic as possible so that's why a lot of my older videos you know, I always describe them as a bit delusional 
Um, in hindsight, I got caught up in the experiences. I got caught up in the personal side of things. Uh, but I like having that there because I think it's still valuable. Um, if you can spot it. Um, and I, I spotted this in hindsight. <laughs> um, and there was a, a, a kind of phase there was a, there was a phasing movement to that the insight and the uh, deepening of the recognition, and it just moved through in the way it did. And it, I find it quite interesting that it happened like that, and it kind of all happened perfectly. But I like having that there. I like having the yeah the obstruction there, the any delusion that was there. Um, clear to see because it can be valuable. Anything can be valuable. Anything to me is wisdom. Um, if you if you know how to look, <laughs> if you're looking from the right place. Um, but if anyone doesn't feel comfortable posting certain things, just fire me an email. But thank you for the suggestion. So, big long one, Billy James says, It has never came. He who was till then, the pins are hidden by the shadow of the plastic due to the height of the connector. <laughs> the ego in brackets, God appearing as something it's not. Yeah, I like that. We might not, we might be battling the unknown if they don't. Once you know Father of Christmas isn't real, you can never go back to believing he's real again. Um, oh, I could talk for ages about that, but I'm just going to continue with the, with the comment. Not knowing what had happened would have been intolerable and finding that there is something else going on. Nothing to do with reading a book. It's strange. Like, it's not in the words, but maybe it wouldn't be happening without the words. It's definitely not in the ideas yet. Maybe it wouldn't be happening without the ideas. Maybe it would be. People go on silent retreats. Yeah, the thing about that is we're never going to know. <laughs> we're never going to know. Um, to me, the words are weird enough. Like, you know... The sound is weird enough, the sound is profound enough, the the language is profound enough, how it seems to be understood is pr profound enough to have that be um, to, to have the language in it has an immense wisdom, the sound in it has an immense wisdom, um, even the concepts, even the thoughts all of it's wisdom to me now, at least now. There isn't a distinction between between this and that, but I often say it's, it's not about the language. I say that so that there, there might be a chance to get through the conceptual layers and talk straight to what, where I'm talking from, seemingly received by a person. Is that actually happening? Yes and no. You've t the answer to every duality is both and neither is paradox so it just becomes more and more simple but it is valuable to explore these distinctions to explore these dualities in that we can deconstruct them um, and see that th there isn't really any inherent meaning or any inherent not this or is that in it if you really go into it if you really go into it but I totally get what you mean and the, and that's the system itself. Things, objects are over, cloak emphasised, and the awareness is underplayed. Hang on, sorry. Thus, awareness not being conscious, and that we're conscious of, to tell you you're trapped by inferring that which is what you could call free think there's a better way, but there's an ideation of an image called selfing. The mental state points to the after as being the before. Yeah. This, this language very much reminds me of Paul Hederman. If you're not familiar with Paul Hederman, I, I would definitely check him out. There's definitely a similarity in the, the thinking process or the, at least the explanation here um, language emphasis there isn't as used as the subject of experience to make ob 
an object of ideation. You are all that's been thinking about. But there isn't a self doing selfing that implies there there is a self doing it. There's a mechanical system doing it, thus reinforcing the knowing that you are not. Mama has died in the night looking from the bondage of self as self contracted energy or pseudo eye strap from chest to head overcloaked by superimposed <laughs> phantom which orchestrates the, t the trinity which actuates, actuates the body very very poetic um, but I'm not sure I'm following that um, it may have real importance of being wrong because it will be right about how wrong it believes you are so you're wondering why you're messing things up because then it can be about how you how wrong you are. Yeah. Totally. Um, there's a lot of very poetic kind of artistic language in the comments recently, and I, I think that's so valuable to to put that down. <laughs> to, um, and to see it as like an artistic expression of something, something unknowable. Um, and I think the artistic and the expressive and the poetic side of that, um, expressed that way, is so much more valuable than a statement about objectively the way it is and, and so on. Um, and I think there's a lot of value in that for sure. I suppose that's what I'm doing with these videos as well. Um, I'd be inclined to think of it as none of it's true, of course, but it's a an artistic expression, <laughs> poetic expression, and in that it, it refers to something that that is something that's in it. At least it tries to. It doesn't never quite does it, but at least it tries to. Um, and I guess that's the value in the whole pointing thing. Um, N to M T ness says this universal metal symbol, nice one. Stella says thank you, thank you. Cool badge says hi David, like your videos, thanks for sharing, thanks for watching and commenting. Gypsy moth says I'm so glad you said to follow this intuitively if that feels right. Sometimes I get this feeling to drop the search entirely and just live my life. Not giving up on it, more like just. I just know somehow it'll all be alright. Trying to do anything else has been really exhausting lately. Yeah, this, uh, what you're experiencing is exactly what I experience and I made a video called something like the the end of the spiritual journey and it, this is when the path this is when the path goes off the path and goes off the map and you can't follow anything it becomes entirely intuitive and at a certain point you, you just you feel that you know it, and then you just let go and then it becomes so much more simple so much more beautiful after that and um, you it's a release of control not trying to control things not trying to get something it's a massive insight, it's a massive uh, realisation that and incredibly incredibly uh, transformative uh, massive weight lifted off the shoulders um, massive peace and massive freedom in that so I'm really gl uh, glad for you that you're you're feeling that, it's, it's good news um, G0OI88 I think that's a kind of meant to be a word with numbers in it, I'm not sure. I said, can I ask if there's a location where you feel, felt the existential suffering? In the body, but also nowhere in particular. Uh, nowhere that can be really... It started off as it seemed like it, it felt like it was in the body. Initially it felt in the mind, um, and then the body, 
and then in, upon investigation it couldn't be found in the body because the body didn't appear to be a separate thing with a distinct existence separate from the environment so then it was the environment it was the body um, so ultimately I can't say that I felt it anywhere but it was certainly here and initially it, it was thought emotion then it was just emotion um, and then it was undefinable um, but there's certainly a strong visceral reaction um, and when, when you really go into it when you're not separate from that as in not referring to it, the value of it by thoughts or relating to it as a me um, you become it and when you become it, you, it it's infinite it's infinite and that's partially what's so scary about it because it's you know you have to go fully into it um, you, it's hard to describe it's like a a helplessness uh, an acceptance of that an acceptance of the not knowing an acceptance of the not being able to control or predict or manage um, and the all-encompassing nature of it, the limitless nature of it, the unstoppable nature of that. It's not even, it ends up not even being like an emotion it, 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 or at least it's the very foundation of, of what all seemingly intense negative emotions are built upon but it's not definable in the sense that you can say you, you could list a whole bunch of emotions that we think we know what they are and that would vaguely describe it um, but I would just make a guess and I would say that it feels like it's in the body it feels like an energetic tension in this position here in this centre point um, and as you go into that, as you become that fully, um, you can't find it. You, you, you can't find it to refer to it. You can't find it to get away from it or to escape it. And it really doesn't matter where it is because it's full on. So you don't, you don't have to find it to experience it. You don't have to find it to get away from it. Um, that's, I guess, the best way I could, I could describe it. But what does it feel like for you? And let us know. Anyway, that'll do for now, and talk to you next time.